Welcome back in room seven, where next to me is Maaike Hagen, associate professor at the Radboud University here. She investigates loneliness. Maaike, welcome. Thank you. Can you briefly describe what your research is? Yeah, well, my, my research is essentially about uh, social health. Um, many researchers study mental health, like depression and anxiety, uh, but we know that social relations is like the, the key aspect of healthy development. So I uh, study s uh, social health and on the contrary, loneliness, because that is kind of an absence of social health, mm -hmm. um, and mainly in um, adolescents and students. Okay. Thanks. Well, from your perspective, we'll be talking about the, the, the film that we saw. And uh, luckily also with the filmmaker, he's here uh, at Resume, Jean Costa. Welcome. Hello. Good to see you all, all the way from Paris, right? Yeah, I'm in Paris now. No. OK, OK, OK. So welcome. Um, the film starts with interaction on a dating app. And uh, immediately we feel that this is direct, impersonal, and later on even plain aggressive and racist. I'm not on those apps. Is this really how it is? Is this the usual contact? Um, I don't know if it's uh, like that for everybody, but it, wa it was my experience in Corsica. Hmm. Um, all the messages that you see in the in the film the, that was messages that, that were messages that I received in Corsica when I was there uh, on dating apps. apps. Wow. So, um, like the conversation with the guy that uh, tells me that that I'm uh, very sexy and like a uh, uh, sex Latino and uh, that I have a tan. It, it's it's a real conversation, and in in the, in the same conversation um, at the end, when I decided not to to meet him, he told him that I, that I was like a, an ugly um, yeah. ape, and uh, it was like, like that. So I just um, um, put. All this together in my film, all my experiences in Corsica, in Corsica I put it in, in my film. So you have also, in real person, met the Oracle, this 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 yeah. character, yeah. which yeah. was very interesting, drawn like a tarot card. I thought that was really beautiful done, and he's really willing to invest in a one-on-one -on -one conversation and relationship. Is yeah, that um, the, the significance you wanted to show between, uh, well, maybe the way people interact pre-dating apps and uh, now that we have the dating apps? Is that the distinction? Um, actually, I don't think it, I don't think it's like that. People people met before uh, directly like that, but they can do that uh, now with dating apps. I usually I used to do that. Um, actually, wha what I intent to do in Corsica, it was like what I did uh, before in, in another countries, in other cities. Um, when I arrived, I always try to make contact with people uh, that lives there, uh, that live there, to, to know where can I go, or um, where are the parties, where are the gay, gay spaces. And I tried to do that in Corsica, but it didn't uh, work because there are no like gay uh, public gay life in Corsica and it was the difference and I I could do that uh, like in Portugal I lived in Portugal and I could do that I could do that in um, Netherlands and even in in Berlin and uh, everywhere it was just um, a different experience in Corsica and it was when I I saw a subject uh, something that I wanted, I wanted to um, to discuss, and I wanted to film. Yeah, and did you experience the difference for yourself? Did you do these things when there were no apps yet, when there was no social media yet? Yeah. Was yeah, there yeah. a difference? Yeah, it was different. Different because I was in Rio de Janeiro, my city, mm -hmm. and because I'm from Brazil, so uh, in, in Rio de Janeiro we are very open to that so we just um flirt like uh directly with with people like i saw someone that pleasures me though so I, I try to make eye contact or something like that and it's kind of different uh when you you are in the applications of like uh grinder because um there are people that are searching for looking for like relationships but 
the the dating app um, almost force you to to do something sexual in the in the application. Ah. It's kind of different, you know. And why is that? Could you can you pinpoint what the technical circumstances are that drive you towards more sex related contact? Um, it it actually depends. It actually depends because in Corsica uh, people are very like I cannot be a uh, gay official in my life, so I have to uh, do that in private. But in private, I don't want to be in a relationship, so I can feel uh, less gay. So if I just do sex with someone, uh -huh. if I just have sex with someone. Maybe I'm not that gay, so I can live my public life in a straight way. Right. I don't know. Uh, I'm not a scientist, but <laughs> it's, my, it's my, my experience when I was talking to people there. And it's different. It's, it was different in Rio de Janeiro. It's different in Paris. So um, I tried to, um, to find some similarities, mm -hmm. but... Uh, in Corsica, it was really different for me. Yeah. Well, luckily, we do have a scientist here in the studio. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure whether you can answer that question. <laughs> but, but how do you feel social media and apps like these have, have influenced the way we talk and we communicate? Um, yeah, well, I think especially in young people, they, they use like slang all the time. And we, all, of course, also know about the sexting uh, phenomenon, so that young people... Um, are now more easy, like making pictures from, from their naked bodies, um, whereas the, the age of their first intercourse is later than it used to be. So that it's, it's kind of a replacement, that the sexting comes before having a first intercourse. Um, and I think, um, yeah, we always say social media can be an addition to your offline uh, world, um, if it's really two separate worlds, it can be problematic. So if you only meet um, specific people online and you never meet them offline, like th when, whether there's a real distinction, um, there's not really uh, good quality relationships in those online contexts, uh, whereas there is an offline context. So we always say if, if there is like, um, if the online world adds to your offline world, mm -hmm. then it could be really good to, to use social media. So what are the differences exactly? Is it, is it easier for us to communicate on a normal level when we have like body contact, when we see each other face to face? What are the circumstances that benefit that yeah. offline contact? Yeah, I think um, because indeed you see the whole body, so you see all the gestures, it's more easy body to, language. yeah, the body language, you really understand each other. Um, and only like seeing screens or looking at pictures, it's such a small part of one's like how people are. And um, for example, now I, I hired new people at the university and I've never seen them, them in real life. And I also noticed that the communication, it's like really checking, are we on the same page? Uh, what do you mean? Um, so it's, it's really different, I think, to only have, um, well, online uh, contact. Yeah. yeah. I, I think, uh, Sean, it was very interesting, the opening scene of your film where they're in the bus and all these messages pop up and they're really uh, direct and then you just see like normal people driving a bus and those two are, have a sort of disconnect. As you, maybe as you mentioned, the online and the offline world, you can pretend to be something else, someone else online. It, would you say that's a good thing or a bad thing or how should we deal with that? Um, actually, we are always like um, um, trying to uh, to make an image uh, about us mm -hmm. even if when we are uh, like uh, in real life but uh, it's kind of difficult to um, keep the character all the time so in the uh, the the, um, the um, like the small gests we can saw we can see uh, the the real person and the first scene of my film, it was like, uh, it's a, it was about that, like when Tonio arrived in Corsica, he was like uh, thinking about uh, what he could uh, find there. And it was uh, his imag imagination actually, like uh, maybe this guy that is just uh, in front of ah, me right. is that guy in the application because he 
but his message in the uh, in the in the application um, is not like him in person, but it he could be he uh, uh, could be um, I don't know, like he could be the the the, the guy who wants to um, to. I I even don't remember. I'm sorry, my English is very bad. That's so okay. That's okay. I can still follow you. Yeah. 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 So uh, it was like the imagination of Tonio, like uh, yeah, it, he's this guy, but he could also be this guy in the application. So I was like uh, playing with this thing. Yeah. What, it, what I also think is fascinating is that you use an app such as Grindr, which uh, most of the people just know for, for sexual contacts, as mm -hmm. a way to get to know a city and, and to, to, to make contact with like-minded people. And not, I imagine not only for sex, but also for going out, for making friends. Yeah, for yeah. yeah. because uh, as I said, it's, it, it's my experience. Like, I've been using the uh, dating apps uh, since I was like, 24. I'm 29 now, but and I, uh, I I've already wanted uh, I've already wanted like uh, a night a night stand, and I've already wanted just a friend. I've already, already wanted uh, just to, to go to a party in the city that I don't know. So I used the, the dating apps for a lot of things, not yeah. just for sex. So why not? Uh, I, I think it's completely possible, mm -hmm. uh, and it was uh, what I was trying to do in Corsica, and um, uh, that uh, that was uh, what what you said uh, about um, like um, um, sorry I'm I kind of, I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> it's okay. You, you forgot your question. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Never mind. If it pops up, just just let yeah, us know. Yeah, yeah. I have a question for Micah because, um, as Sean was saying, there there are technicalities within these apps that make you maybe uh, push you towards sexual context in the, in this uh, in this matter. How could we change those apps, even technically or or the effects that they have psychologically on us, to make them more open, more more broad, more friendly? <laughs> Well, I'm not so sure whether I have something to say about the techniques uh, from these apps. But what I do think is that um, already in primary school, children need to learn how to um, like deal with social media. Mm. Because um, we never had it in school, but we, we were older when we um, got our f uh, first phone. But now it's so n normal for already like 12 year olds to have their own phone. And um, well, it's, 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 a, it's not related to this topic, but bullying, for example, also occurs online. Mm. Um, so I think it would be really good to, to that children really learn how you use like social media channels um, without like being harsh to someone else and also that you can benefit from it. Because what also happens uh, quite often with social media is that there's this social comparison that um, whether it is Instagram, Facebook or whatever you see other people, they go out and they look nice, they are beautiful, but they only post their like, best pictures. Mm. So there's always this social comparison and, and it can make uh, young people feel that they are um, yeah, worth less right. uh, than, than the people that they see. So I think we, there's really a will to win in really educating young people how to deal with these apps. And how, how do we do it? Do you have tips? Um, well, I think it's first um, important that schools also see this um, point. Mm. Um, what I always hear is that they have to teach already such a lot that including uh, like how you use your phone or how you do um, well on social media is just too much to also do in school. Yeah. So I think this also really needs a, a change in thinking, like what do we find important and maybe times have changed. Mm. So we are not only offline people anymore, we are really also online people. And I think schools are quite outdated in that respect. So what are the tips that I should give to my six year old cousin? How um, to deal with these things, not Grinder, I imagine, but no. <laughs> some other social apps. Yeah. Um, don't trust everything that you see or read. Mm. Um, 
Yeah, and I would also say, I think to my children, be honest about who, uh, what you feel and who you are, instead of indeed having this character that you, you act like being someone, but then if people meet you in real and you are not really that character or you don't even look like the best picture that you ever posted, mm. then people also kind of scare away from you because you are not the person that you yeah, were saying to be. Yeah. So there's, uh, yeah. So honesty. Yeah. But I think it's really difficult because if all their peers in class are also not honest, yeah, then you are like this, uh, the like the little nerd maybe in class who is showing his uh, ugly pictures or saying I feel bad. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that is the social comparison yeah. idea. Yeah. Sean, in in the movie, uh, I think we do tend to value the real connection more. I mean, that's how the film ends in a beautiful scene with with two people just being together and, and the cell phone is miles away. I, is that in, in the order you think, you think of it? Is, is the real contact the first thing and then somewhere underneath there's digital contact? Um, yeah, it's kind of that, yeah. I think I, I thought about that when I was filming and when, when, I, when I had my encounter with the, the, the real oracle. So for me, uh, my film is not like just about sexuality, but it's about an, an encounter and how we can connect with people. Can, can we connect to people um, today? So, yeah. yeah. So how would you like to change Grinder if you were uh, to speak the boss with, within five minutes, you could call him and just say, OK, change this and this and this. Um, I don't know if I want to change Grinder. Maybe the um, the publicity in Grinder, like with the uh, standard uh, guys and like very sexual things, because I actually don't mind if it's a sexual application mm -hmm. or if it's just an application to uh, to go on dates or to go to parties. Um, I think we we can. Um, build our our application you know like we are there like i'm there um another gay person are there, uh, is there so it's just the way we uh, are used to connect to people that have to change and it's not grinder it's grinder it's on grinder but it's on our society in general like if people were, uh, were not that conservative in Corsica, maybe they use uh, the they could use the the application in another way. Yeah, I don't know. You know, like it's not the, just the application, but it's the society in general. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, Micah investigates loneliness. That, that's her topic. How, how would you relate loneliness to your short film? Um, as I said, like it was my experience in Corsica. I've been in in France um, for almost five years, and it was the first year that I was like lonely. I I was not with my friends. I was not with my boyfriend. I was just me, lonely in Corsica, in another island uh, that I didn't know, and I was really lonely, and it. And I, we had the lockdown, and it was in the lockdown that I uh, that I wrote my my screenplay. And uh, the film is about some someone that is lonely in uh, in a place that that he doesn't know, and he's trying uh, to make a connection. So Tonio is a lonely person. Yeah. Uh, he's a foreign and a stranger in there. He doesn't know the codes of the island. And he's just trying to know the codes, to make a friend or to um, have a date or to have something. He just wants to have something there. Hmm. Yeah. Micah, any, any thoughts on, on loneliness and apps like these? Any, any way to deal with them? Or um, are they an extension of loneliness? I mean, Lonely people. There are lonely people, so lonely people use apps. Yeah, it's also true. Yeah, so yeah, so even more so. Lonely people tend to use more apps. Um, so it's not the case that by using social media that you become more lonely. Right. But it seems to be the other way around. So lonely people use those apps uh, more, right. uh, but they also post more texts um, from which you can derive that they 
kind of feel lonely. So if you, for example, Twitter, is, it's another media channel, of course. But if you code all the texts, you can see which people are more, um, I mean, not on an individual basis, but if you code like plenty, plenty, plenty tweets, um, then you can also see which people um, may be more lonely, for example. Oh. So and it's and also in, in the language. What are you language. referring to? What, what kind of groups? Um, well, that could be that could be any group. I think any any minority group um, has an increased risk of feeling lonely. Uh, it makes yeah. sense. Yeah. In the in the larger society. Yeah. And you you say by by the their use of social media, you can tell whether they belong to that group or not. Yeah. Yeah. It's really interesting. We we could go on. Yeah. <laughs> about this for another more hour, but we don't have that time. Sorry, thank you, Maike, for being here. Uh, thank you, Jean. Uh, will there be another film of you? Because this was your first directed film, right? Oh, sorry, I think your sound is already gone. Could be us, could be you. Uh, ah, there you it are again. It was my first film, yeah. and it was my graduation film. So are you working on something else? Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, I'm writing another uh, another screenplay for uh, doku fiction about um, uh, selling pornography on the internet. Ah, cool. yes. Does it involve apps? <laughs> yes, yes, it involves uh, a website actually, OnlyFans. Okay, great. Sounds yeah. great. Well, uh, hopefully finish it for next year, and we'll talk to each other uh, in one year. Yes. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> Bye. Pleasure. Bye.